Even though Vince Lombardi may never have coached the triple option that Georgia Tech runs, Lombardi somewhere in the heavens had to have been smiling, though, at Georgia Tech this past year. Why, you ask? Because in this modern era where almost everyone is throwing the ball predominantly for offensive success in high-scoring games, Georgia Tech has proof that you can still run the football predominantly and win ball games. I think that's why Lombardi might have been smiling last year to see that, again, Lombardi didn't coach the triple option, but Green Bay teams were known for the seal here and seal there and running wide and really making the ground game a foundation of football. Well, Georgia Tech is proof that you can still do that and you can still win games. And last season, Georgia Tech unexpectedly won 11 ball games got to a major bowl game and beat Mississippi State in that bowl game, the Orange Bowl, uh, by scoring nearly half a hundred points in that contest. But to me, what stuck out for Georgia Tech last season was the red-hot November that they had. They played better defensively and offensively, did what they do best, and that is run the ball. They led the country, as a matter of fact, in rushing yardage a year ago with well over 340 yards on the ground. It's pretty darn good. And they were also number one in the ACC when it came to uh, point production. Um, this team last season, well over 35 points per game, and they have a, well over 34 minutes per game of time of possession. That's Georgia Tech football at its finest. But that November, they beat Clemson. I thought that was the most impressive win because they beat it by three touchdowns. The game wasn't even close, and Clemson had a pretty good football team. Add that win at Georgia at the end of the year in overtime, and a close call against Florida State, who at that time had a 28-game winning streak. Florida State won, but barely, as Georgia Tech gave Florida State all they wanted. 11-3 for Georgia Tech, and hopes are high with the majority of their starters back that they can make a return trip to the ACC championship game and maybe this time win it. Justin Thomas will have a lot to do with that. He dictates this offense. He can run. He can throw. We saw last season him throwing for um, 18 touchdowns and just six picks. But, of course, running the ball is what he does best, over 1,000 yards rushing for the QB and eight touchdowns on the ground. So 26 touchdowns he was responsible for, are they running or throwing? Now, one of the two receivers uh, you know, does come back. You might be saying, well, we're talking about receivers when we're talking about the triple option, because you still have to have that ability to throw. And, yeah, Georgia Tech did rank uh, pretty low when it came to passing, but that was expected. Um, Michael Summers returns as a wide receiver. They'll really be counting on him for his experience. <clears throat> for the five-down lineman return for the Rambling Wreck, and they are a big reason why Georgia Tech, again, was tops in the country when it came to running the football. Um, you know, you have Trey Brown back at a uh, left guard. Also, too, um, um, Aaron Joe at right tackle. The other tackle is back in Brian Chamberlain. And uh, Freddie Burton at center. So lots of experience on the line. Backfield's going to be fairly new, and this is a big reason why a lot of people don't think that Georgia Tech can duplicate or better 11 wins from a year ago. Got to replace all three of the backs. Keep in mind the triple option threat. You have two A backs and a B back, and they all have to be replaced. Although, um, when you have a guy that averages about 10 yards per carry in limited playing time in uh, Broderick Snotty, that'll help. He had 290 yards rushing, but 10 yards per carry. So, this time we get to see how he does on a full-time basis. A big setback for Georgia Tech occurred, though, in April when C.J. Leggett uh, tore an ACL. So he's done for the 2015 season. That's really a shame, too, because he was going to have his opportunity to shine as well. So Georgia Tech, if they suffer any more injuries in that backfield, it's going to be a pretty long year because, again, you had so much experience in that backfield a year ago, and now you have, for the most part, unproven long-term talent um, for Georgia Tech running the football besides, of course, uh, Thomas the quarterback. Defensively, Paul Johnson um, made no um, excuses at all and didn't sugarcoat it. His defense was bad last season. This is the biggest reason why Georgia Tech um, you know, didn't beat Florida State was because of the fact that their defense had way too many leaks. And this was a problem throughout the season. Yeah, they played better in November, but for the most part, Georgia Tech got torched. Uh, pass defense, they were brutal. Um, second to the last in the ACC when it came to overall yardage allowed, uh, you know, giving up 411 yards per game. And, you know, major college football, it's hard to make yourself a college football playoff candidate when you're giving up yardage like that. The rushing part of it, as far as defense goes, compared to the rest of the country, they were okay. When it came to the rest of the ACC competition, uh, not so much. So, 
Um, Georgia Tech returning seven starters, and you hope that these guys have gotten better if you're a, a Yellow Jacket fan. Um, at the defensive line, um, Keyshawn Freeman um, at his in position, four and a half sacks a year ago. Defensive tackle um, in Adam Gostas, you have him back. And at a, a linebacker, um, P.J. Davis, 119 tackles. So he's going to be uh, dependent upon quite heavily. Most of the secondary is back, and that includes both corners, in D.J. White and in um, – and uh, Chris uh, Milton and Jamal Golden at free safety, and you have the uh, nickelback that's Demont Smith. So Georgia Tech, if they can find a pass rush, a consistent pass rush, then the defensive backfield should be aided in that regard, and they'll need to be because the schedule, as I'll talk about here in a little bit, it's a bear. Special teams wise, um, Harrison Butker he returns. Of course, he was one of the heroes in the Georgia victory in Athens a year ago, 53-yard field goal that forced overtime. But still, he knows that he has improvement because he missed several kicks last year, five that were less than 40 yards. So consistency will be a big topic for him. And the great thing about Georgia Tech's offense, because they take so much time off the clock and because they're so successful, you don't see the punter that often. Um, so last season, only 32 punts is what they had, uh, barely over two per game. And if you're a Georgia Tech fan, you got hope that that trend um, can continue. The schedule, once you get past the first two games, which should be breezes against Alcorn State and Tulane, both, by the way, in Atlanta, it gets very tough. In fact, I think it's one of the most difficult schedules in the country. At Notre Dame and at Duke, back-to-back -back weeks is not going to be any fun for anybody in Atlanta. We know how good Notre Dame is on defense returning nearly everybody. That could be a hard matchup because, again, Georgia Tech with a new backfield, they may not have had enough time to get acclimated. So playing Notre Dame that early in the year is a rotten break. Playing at Duke, and keep in mind, Duke is not just a basketball school anymore. Last season, the Blue Devils on the gridiron not only beat Georgia Tech, but also, too, won nine ball games. Coach Cl you know, Cutcliffe is doing a great job in uh, Durham. North Carolina also beat Georgia Tech a year ago, but this time you get um, you get the uh, Tar Heels at home and not at Chapel Hill, but you go to Clemson the following week. And this is when we're really going to see what Georgia Tech's health is really like because the bye week doesn't occur until early November. But before you can even think about the bye week, you have to think about Pittsburgh and you have to think about the defending ACC champion, Florida State Seminoles. You get them back-to-back -back at home. By week, and then um, the rest of the schedule, if, if you're looking at November at Virginia, of course, we've documented before Coach London really uh, on the hot seat. So that could be a game where Virginia plays with even more incentive to try to keep their coach's job. Virginia Tech at home, and then you close out at Miami and your hated rivals from Athens, Georgia, in a uh, interconference game uh, from the SEC, but this time you play them in Atlanta. Georgia Tech, because of their offense, my final thoughts on the Yellow Jackets, their offense, uh, the way that they hog time, it is really essential because you're only leaving your defense on the field for 26 minutes a game. If they can continue that trend, Georgia Tech will be in every single game that they play in, even against amongst the toughest competition. Biggest problem Georgia Tech has, though, is the fact that it's a new backfield. And defensively, yeah, they had a very high um, takeaway margin, plus 14. They're going to have to have that again because the defense just gives up too many yards. And last season, uh, the D allowed 26 points per game. So I still don't trust that defense for Georgia Tech. And the backfield is unproven. And if they have any additional injuries, we already mentioned the legged injury that set them back, then the team's going to be in a bind. Georgia Tech will win more than they lose this year, but I find it hard to believe that they're going to duplicate or better 11 wins from a year ago. They set the bar pretty high. I've got them going 8-4, and four, but because the Coastal Division is wide open with teams like Pittsburgh, Botech, Miami, and Duke, Georgia Tech is going to wind up in the ACC race, and I think they're going to win out in a tie break to get back to the ACC championship game, but I don't think there's enough arsenal there to beat the Atlantic Division champion and get to a major bowl.